yeah. <laughs> I stayed up till two last night and I'm shot. Oh man. Hi everyone. Dan here on with John, Renee and Robin. Good morning and good Friday good morning. or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for joining us today, man. It's Ooh, a, Bill, 105 a, degrees. Wet degrees. Mm. Oh, mm. yuck. Hey Mike, how you That's doing? Nice. Uh, so welcome guys and uh, look forward to have a little fun here today. Been a Three week here, three weeks since we've done this because uh, uh, July happened to be one of those odd weeks that have five Fridays in it. So now we're back to regular every other week here for a little bit. Yay. Anyway, um, we got Mike, we got Jeff Rexford's here. Hey, Jeff, looking forward to seeing you guys in Coeur d'Alene. Um, and let me, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I've got a, we've got a, one room left to share in Coeur d'Alene that if you're interested, I'll bring that up later. Anyway, uh, we're going to just have some fun today, talking icons and see if we can throw a few pointers your way. Uh, as, as we do these shows and there's all these <coughs> topics we want to talk about, it's it just at a, at a point you just go, well, what do you want to talk about now? Um, as we all know, we could go on for about a week. <laughs> um, and we'd, we'd probably never cover everything. So no. that's no. that's what makes this program so much fun. It's just, just so many ways to do so many things. And, uh, and hey, you know, we're having fun and we're making money. So uh, hopefully we're making money. That's the good yes. thing. So a couple of things uh, before we get started. I want mm -hmm. to share with you that um, do have a little bit of a sale going on right now. So we've got some of our products up there. <clears throat> that uh, 40% off for, uh, till August 19th. So check them out. So those are the things we, we're going to offer. And it's a really good deal. And you can save more if you bundle. I mean, because you'll see on the offer page uh, in the store that we've got some of these things grouped together. So check it out. Uh, love to have you in there. In fact, today uh, we're going to be using as part of our template here. Uh, um, oh, here's the store with all the things. And the different products are listed here. If you, there's a button there to get some more information on each one. But today we're going to be using a uh, page from one of my classes I did for the mastering. It's uh, sec session number two out of 16, uh, Mastering Chief's 2D CAD tools, which if you've been using Chief at all, you know the CAD function in the program is pretty powerful. Uh, it, you know, we'll go head to head with any CAD program out there uh, in the world of architecture. Not going to design a car or a bridge with Chief, although R Rene could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd render it and have people walking over it too. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to be using uh, this page from my that class, uh, and we're going to spin those icons up. But you'll see that, in, and this is included in the 40% off. This is a hell of a class that um, I'm selling for only $5.97 on regular price and then you get 40 percent off this course i way underpriced this class okay so there's a ton of information here and if any of you on the call have taken this class you know chime in i'd love to hear your feedback but there's a ton of information here and um, there's 16 other sessions in this course that we go through uh, with just about as much detail as you're seeing here so it, it's fairly extensive course and and all the courses that we do are all time coded. So that means that you'll be able to go into the course and when you search and find a topic that you want, you can just uh, go to the video and fast forward to that time code. Unfortunately, the software doesn't allow me just to click, have, let you click on that number. You actually have to fast forward, but still works fine. Everybody does that. Um, okay, Bill Murray did a canvas scan and he's blown away. Awesome. So I'm glad that's working for you. So. But as with everything with uh, any of that, that technology, uh, verify. So, all right. Uh, you guys got anything you want to add about what I just said? Yeah. If you haven't taken the course, you should. Um, I use, I go back and back to these things often. It's, they're brilliant. They're brilliant. There's always um, information to gain from reviewing the classes. Yeah. And you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can just go to the little segments and watch that. It's, they're great. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and you come back and you learn something new every time. And I'm really excited about going to Coeur d'Alene here. Uh, it's been, this will be three years now since the last time we were out there. And they offer these uh, courses. I don't know if any of you on the call are going to be going or not. But 
but they do offer courses out there. Um, it's Coeur is a great city and it's really fun to be with everybody out there. In fact, uh, we've rented, I've rented three houses out there and looking, f I have one, well, two, maybe two, but for sure one spot left available. If anybody's going to Coeur d'Alene and you rented a hotel or something like that, or if you're looking for a place to stay, um, I have one spot, one room left in one of the houses. I've got three places rented. Uh, two of the houses are right here. And then there's one just a half mile away that we're putting some people in. I got two spaces left there and it's uh, 585 for four nights. We're going to be there Tuesday through Saturday. We're leaving on Saturday. So it's 40, 585 for the four nights. That's just the room. Um, we, you know, you're going to be hanging out with some really fun John's people over there. We yeah. have a great oh, time. I think St. Martin and Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good Jeff, guys in there. Jeff's on the call. I mean, these guys are, yeah. All of these are, we're all pretty heavy hitters. Yeah. So you'd be hanging wigs. out with some really fun people. Robin was going to come, but now she's going to go see her grandbaby instead. He's, hey, he's grandbabies cute. win out every time. I know. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I got a couple of spaces left, but we'll be hanging uh, over here. You know, you'd be sleeping over there, but we'll hang out here. We'll be doing a lot of things together. We always have a great time when we go there and you'll learn a ton from the class. And when you come back to the house and you're sitting around and we're asking questions yeah, so, anyway. from us goofing around. Too. I know yeah. that's, that's where the, that's where the real learning happens. All right, let's move on. Um, so what do we got here? We've got our wheel of the, the designer's wheel. I'm calling, I didn't know what to call this thing. So, I just put some icons from that page I just showed you on here, plus a few topics. Let's spin it up and let's get started. And by, by the way, you guys, we're giving Dan three minutes today. I'm I have setting a timer and everything. All right, three on minutes every for what? topic. Every oh. topic. <laughs> nice. I don't expect we'll get through all these topics, but uh, and, and you guys, please chime in. In fact, uh, you know, we'll maybe take turns, and you guys can handle some of these too. Put, so, what is that? Icon? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, put Rick. it in the comments. See who can yeah, guess yeah, it. Yeah. So what is that icon? Uh, feel free to uh, do it, or we'll just go to this page, and you'll see that that is the multiple copy icon. And uh, you use it to drag out copies in your plan. And you can use the right mouse button to get copies over and down. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Let's go into Chief. Uh, I use that all the time for lots of different things, tile layout, framing layout. So let's just throw, you know, let's just throw a framing item in our plan. Um, I guess I should go to the framing plan first. Uh, um, and we'll throw a framing item. We're going to lay out some joists. So, so there's a joist. I want those spaced every 16 inches. So we could go here, double click on that, or click once on that icon. So the icon's down here on the edit toolbar. Once you click on that, you click it again. And then you click it again over there to set your distance. So I want to space these joists out every 16 inches. And um, in fact, in this case, because it is a joist, those settings are already in there. Usually it comes up highlighted, I thought, didn't it? So when I do that, oh, because I'm not set up here, let's do this. And yeah, see how the joist sets up are automatically. So if you're just doing CAD items, you use that. But in this case, we're doing that. So every 16 inches, just pull over and there's your joists and um, you can lay those out. Now, if you want to do something like tile or um, you have some other things you want to do, I'm going to drag out a little box, hit my tab key. Let's make that a six by six box. And then let's go into the multiple copy and lay out some tile. So I'm going to click on that again. And this time I'm going to go 6.25 and 6.25. So I'm going to put that in both of these. And when I'm laying out tile in 3D on the wall, do it in 2D CAD first and then convert it to CAD, uh, to 3D. It's a lot easier to work with when you do that because you'll have the trim and extend and all that kind of stuff available to you, which you don't have available in the 3D items. So click OK. Now I'm going to drag this with my right mouse button instead of my left. This is important. So when I go over to the right, I can go as many tiles as I want. And when I let go of my right mouse button and pull down, now I can continue down. So that's using both of those in my multiple copy right mouse button all right so your, your alternate behavior the alternate right behavior button. yep and that's what that's why you see this here this column you'll see that but that they should put a little thing on here that says use the right mouse button dummy um because it won't work otherwise yeah unless, Dan, unless, can you can you zoom in really close and show the grout line 
Oh yeah, because I put a quarter inch in there, it leaves a little line in there. So that's why I did six and a quarter on the six inch box or whatever size you're using. Um, just, uh, you want to see the 3D for the tile? Well, if I want to go 3D, now I've got to select it all and convert it because I just drew CAD boxes. Or did I draw 3D? No, I just drew CAD boxes. But trouble is you can't select them all at once. That's something I don't like about this. So now I could go in here and convert that, make it a 3D solid, set my things, what I want to put on the right layer, um, and then bring that up. And I would do it a little different. But again, because of time, I'm just doing it real quickly. Uh, but when that comes up in 3D, that'll be the 3D top. So the, the, the only downside is you can't, uh, I can't do that whole grouping at once because it's just too many items. Chief does have a limit on that, but you do it two well, times, how, three times. So how do you take simple. that in the 2D layer and now put it on the wall? Well, you draw it on the wall and then convert it. Oh, you would have drawn it. Okay. I would have drawn it on the wall and then converted it. Got yeah, it. In fact, okay. I would have used... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, sorry, we can't backsplash tool or material regions. We Could can't use them. We can't convert it to a material region, can we? So um, you can convert it to. Can we convert to material region? Oh, we yeah, can. Right there. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would convert it to, and that way it'll cut around windows and doors and all that stuff automatically. Much much easier to work with. So all right, then the wheel. Then the wheel. John says, okay. Um, all right, who wants to take did, this? How one? how many minutes did you was he on on that one, John? 359. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Tighten it up. <laughs> Tighten it up, John. Uh, with the question, so I gave him a little leeway. Okay. <clears throat> Let's spin her up. I don't know if you're hearing the sound or not, but I'm not. Corner with no post. What does that mean? Anybody want to guess what I mean by that? That'll be a good one. All right. Oh, I had it muted. No wonder. Okay. What does that mean? Um, that means... I want to create a window with no post in it. All oh, right. look, you were prepared this time. Look at me, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought this sunk this one ahead. So so there's there's a window with no post. So how do you do that? Uh, it's actually quite simple. You put a window in the corner, uh, not a big window, just a regular window. And you put another one in. And then you just jam it into the corner. Whoops, I over jammed. You broke it. I, I'll do it so hard. Just push it in there. I suppose you could use your control key to make it a little easier. And when you push two windows together, they kind of turn into one. But and you that, see the graphical representation of the post. Yeah, but you see the post here. Okay, so to get rid of that post, you click on one of the windows and open its dialog box. Go to the frame and turn off corner post. And now you'll have a window with no corner post. Nicely so, done. Yeah. Pretty slick. Nicely Which, if you're done. if you're very clever, you can turn that into a door with no corner posts. Same method, essentially. Yeah, you still need yeah. to use a window, though, right? Yeah. 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 Well, actually, uh, won't the two patio doors come in together? No, they won't do it. So you got to kind of take <laughs> it and, and use windows uh, and then put a door inside. Even of with it. the even because like, you, you yeah. see those kind of doors that yeah. come together. Yeah, and maybe we, a future release. Wait, John, can can Dan have like a few more minutes on this one so that way he can turn it into a door or let Renee can turn it and get it turned sure. into a door? Uh, it, it takes a little longer than that. It's yeah. uh, <laughs> a little fight to it. Yeah. No, okay. that's not part of the rules. Right okay. now for Sorry. another show. <laughs> but that's how you do a corner window. You could just take that window, convert it to look like a door with slabs and stuff, and, and you could make it work. Uh, does that work in corner pocket doors? I don't know. I doubt it well because it's a door i mean we we're doing it yeah. doesn't do doors it only does windows so. keep in mind you could you could create a frame so no door a frame that cuts that is converted to a fixture and then it'll cut a corner out yeah and then you can put whatever you want there come to court lane and robin will show you how to do that renee renee all right spin the wheel here we go uh, spin her up. <clears throat> Don't know sound. You guys hearing sound? Okay. What do we got there? Anybody I, I oh. want to cover that one? Oh, that's that centered, that's copy, or that's a, um, a point to point center. Very good. Item. Yes. Love that tool. Oh, yeah. That's part of the centering tool right here. So 
when you've got your center do, do I get a prize for that for knowing that one? <laughs> yeah, no, you're supposed to know that one. You don't get prizes. <laughs> All right, so here's the one that we just uh, rang up, the point to point, the point to center mm. point. Um, and actually, I haven't used that one in a long time. How do you do that one again? Um, oh, you did. So, you, you did do it. You so, did a class showing it. Yeah, but that was a while ago. So I want to center. Uh, let's put a cabinet here. So I want to center this cabinet between this line in that that wall. OK, That's so right. we're going to no, do the this. door, the door. Okay, let's put a door in the door. All right, we got a door here. I want to center this cabinet between the door and the wall. We're on the other side. Huh? There was a door on the other side. The other side of what? Show how it works with the door on the other side, centering it between that and the wall. I did not. The window, I mean. The window. (laughs) (laughs) Which window? (laughs) Just put it there and and center it between the window underneath the ridge and the wall. This window? Yeah. In the yes. room this way, you want to center it? No, yeah. We're on yes. that wall where it's at. It's going to bring up more points. Is All right. Let's at. just do this one. Okay. So we got our center tool right here. And when we click on that, we've got this thing down here. Okay. So we click on that. And then what do we do? We go click on um, a point, And we click on another point, And then we move that. You see how it moves? It centers between the two clicks I made. And there's a, that thing centered between those two clicks. So it's really simple. It's, it's, it's highlight the item you want to center. Click the centering tool right here. Right. And then click this one and then click on two points that you want to center between. So I want to center in between this and the corner of that window, which I can't get. I can't do it that like I normally would do a point to point. But I'll just, you know, anywhere you click done there's your center so um it does work pretty well now there's got to be more to that and notice how it gives you several different points to center it on yeah the one you want it to do so yeah the two x's the x's that are in there so sometimes if you're centering between something that's up above and below and you want to get something centered they may have two or three x's you have to then click on that x of exactly where you want it because it'll be centered if you have two items like this and you want to center in this space, you have to click, you'll have a, an X up here and an right. X down here and one yeah, in the middle. So it, and you need well, to click on that middle X. Yeah. So it's showing me an X where the item was originally sitting. And then it shows me an X where I clicked the two points. So there's your centering tool. That will save you a lot of time when you're centering things up. Uh, Spin the wheel. And <laughs> Three Thank minutes you. are up. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Okay. What is it? What is that? You guys don't know what that is? I just used it a second. Kind of select object. No, it's this one right here. Rectangular polyline box. Oh, there it is. Oh. So in chief, since everything is nothing but CAD, all right. So when you draw four lines, when you draw four lines together. You're creating a polyline shape. All right. This tool right here is already a rectangular polyline shape. It's just four lines hooked together. Okay. And when you grab those lines, you can move the corners wherever you want. You can make the box bigger and smaller. All right. And if you're a right mouse person, if you grab your right mouse, you can pull two sides out by using your right mouse button instead of using your left mouse button. So that'll save you a little time when you're doing that. So that is a rectangular polyline. Say that one again. Right mouse button does what? When you're when you're pulling CAD lines, mm-hmm. right mouse button, instead of doing this mm-hmm. with the left mouse button, the right mouse button does this. Oh yeah. It pulls the whole pulls it out equally. Kind of like resizing almost to it re, I don't know what you call it, but does that, what it does. does that work with a like a you sent an image to a layout does that work yes and no yes yeah kind (laughs) of um for cropping yes it it does no for resizing it if you sent a picture like if you took a took an elevation and you sent it as a picture as an image to the layout will it resize it that way too or is it going to be concentric still oops 
Let's go do it. If you brought an Let's image. Let's go try it. Let's go capture an image. No, I think it still does it. And I created an image. Oh, I didn't want an image on a picture. I'm using the built-in capture in Chief, by the way. I use it a lot. It's really quite handy. Um, so I just captured a picture of what I had on the screen. And when I pull the corners in here like this, it does resize the picture just as if I was pulling it in with my left mouse button. So it doesn't have any effect on this. What you're talking about is a viewport on the layout right. page. Yep. So Okay, so we're going to go over three minutes here. I'm going to open the layout real quick. Well, you got 15 seconds. Okay. Um, oops, I'll go file new. New layout. And let's switch to uh, page size. Let's send this to the layout. There, do that right there. Uh, that's a, that's a, not an image, though, is it? It's a, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's a live image, but if yeah, you want to crop I'm over, that. see not when I, live. See when I crop over when I do a right mouse yeah. button, it just resizes. But if you crop if you crop that in from the sides first, get it cropped in, then it would do what I was looking Oops. for. Um, crop it into to the image size of the image you want. Like the sides, crop the sides in with the yeah. handle. Well that yeah, then resizing it's easier. But there is a way to resize this. What is that button again? I can never remember this. How did we get that little round button at the top here? Uh, come back to that. Shift, shift I don't click, remember. Shift right. click and zoom in. What are you trying to get? When you click on something, you will yes. get a round button here. That is a yeah, resize shift, button. Shift click and zoom in a little bit. Shift click. Oh, there it is. Thank you. So when I now pull this button, now I can resize the whole thing at once. And then there the you go. There it is. Yeah. So um, anyway, but yeah, still you still have to pull these in. I don't know any way to do that without pulling in well, all sides. Yeah, so. holding the X key Or, down, or so you can do right, right click on a corner. Yeah, that's right. what we were talking about. Yeah. Right click on a corner. Shift right click. I, don't, I haven't played I mean, with this just, much. Yeah, I miss what you guys were trying to do. I was trying to crop two right. sides at once. Wheel. Oh, oh, concentric, see? How do you call co it? Hold your C key. Hold your C key and then. Well, that's it. again. I just want to do two sides. I don't want to do the whole thing. Yeah, no. Concentric will do two sides if you hold your C key and then hit a left or, or right handle, but not a corner handle, not a corner handle, just a left or right. Handle. Oh yeah, but yeah. I want to do the top okay. and bottom. All right, spin the wheel. That's cool. Move on. All right, spin the wheel. Um, you're almost five minutes on that last one. All right. All right. What do we got there? reflect my I favorite way i gave it away this is crazy you use these things every day and you don't think of what their names are you don't think of what their names are i know isn't that funny um so that is this tool reflect about object yeah. reflect about object right here reflect about well, that's an r on my keyboard that's an r i don't even look at it anymore <clears throat> oh yeah there you go right? yeah that's the trouble with doing keystrokes all the time um that particular uh tool Again, I always say this in my classes for you that have been been with me for a while. Never draw more than half of anything. Okay, what does that mean? Really, what it means what it says. Never draw more than half of anything. So, uh, so if you've just finished drawing part of a roof, this image. So let's say I just drew this this roof right here, and I got it exactly the way I want it. I'm going to do a reflect about, but first I'm going to hit the copy button. Okay, right. and then you're going to see that reflect about right here. So I'm going to take the copy I just created and reflect that about a center point. <clears throat> and the center point would be the ridge. You now, because we have a predictive, uh, uh, whatever you call that, we can see what it's doing. So I just created the second half of that item. You know, same with uh, windows and doors or anything like that. So you need a, a door on the other side of the room, copy, reflect about center. And then now I've got a door that's perfectly centered on the other side of the room. So nice tool. Use it. I use ton. that one. I use that one all the time. Just if I'm getting lazy and don't feel like changing a cabinet from a left hinge to a right hinge, just reflect it about itself. Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> great so, point. Is that the same tool that you could you could use that same tool to flip a wall too? Yeah. Uh, no. No, different tool. Different well, tool. I don't know. I know it had 
you go to a different. Oh, there it is down there. It's different. Um, it's the, well, that, you almost had it. Yeah. Oh, I guess you can do. Can you? No, no you can't do it. That way. It doesn't flip it. Yeah. You have to use the flip that wall one. tool. Yeah. So, so that's right. a layers thing, probably. Yeah. Um, and that works in 2D and 3D. I mean, in the elevation view too. So it, it's again really handy tool. All right, let's go spin the wheel. Um, Ooh, so that was a good one. Two minutes and 50, 30 seconds. Catching nice. up. Nice. Nice. Uh, so if you're if you're <clears throat> If you find yourself drawing the thing you've just drawn, but you're drawing it the other way. Oh, what is this? Home designer comp. Oh, comparison video? Compatibility. Compatibility. Oh, compatibility. Okay. Oh. What that means is if you have a client that works with Chief's home designer product, uh, select lower price ones, but for sure the $500 product that they sell, it might be 600 now. I don't know what it is. But I have had a lot of clients, a lot of homeowners that sketch out their own plans or they want to see the work that I'm doing on their home designer program because they bought it. What you do is you double click on this arrow icon right here. Um, and there's a little tick mark you have to check that makes it compatible for them to open your plan and you and look at it and, you, and do things in it. They can move walls and change dimensions and all that kind of stuff. So you do get some compatibility now. A couple of things you don't get, which are super important if you're working with this, uh, someone else in this. This is also great. I know a lot of companies that, you know, they just they have a lot of they have salespeople and the salespeople don't really draw full plans, but they want to do enough drawing to get the ideas across their clients. So they'll go out and buy the five hundred dollar version and use that and then maybe turn their plan over to the people in the office that will use the, uh, the, whole, the full blown chief. But with this, you get zero layer sets you get zero plan views you get zero lots of things in fact when i compare the number of icons in the home designer product with the number of icons in chief's full product you've got 1241 icons for the chief full product not more than that more than that it's yeah. 270 it's 1270 something like that and you've got 600 some for the home product so that'll tell you something right there wow yeah, it's quite a bit so, of difference. But they still get layers, right? One set. One set of layers. One set. So how do I have to send it back to them so they can see what I want them to see? Or They have to understand that when you do all of your stuff with your layer sets up here and your plan views, whatever one you've left it in, when they open it, That's they'll they see get. that. But they won't be able to do a lot. They won't be able right. to turn certain certain things on and off. So it works. It's compatible. They can open it, look at it, walk through it, make notes on it do all sorts of stuff on it, send it back to you, and you can still do all of your things. So it's really a nice feature. Uh, again, I do that with a lot of clients. So good way to do it. All right. Oh, OK, go ahead. Oh, Dan, two minutes and 40 seconds. You're doing great. God. You are really timing the hell out of this one, aren't you? Uh, all right. Oh, the next button. That's just, you can either use that or the tab key. Here you go. That's an easy one because it says next on it. Um, so what is the next button? So when you're working in a, in a, on a bay window, uh, well, you keep in mind when you put things in your plan on your screen, they get stacked up on each other. Okay. So if you draw a line and draw another box on it and box on top of that and box on top of that, all of those items are getting stacked on top of each other on your screen. So sometimes you can't click on something. So now you have to start hitting the next button. And again, when we look at the next button, the tab key is the same thing. So that's what you're going to use when you want to get to something. Or so enter it. key. Oh, the enter key works too? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Cool. Really? We learned something new today. So tab key, enter key, or the next button. So I want to get to that window in the bay window. You click on top of it, hit your tab or enter. Same in 3D. When you go in 3D and look at something, um, you click, hit your tab key, click, hit, hit your tab key. So that's how you get the bay unit and then the bay window. And same with everything else in your plan is things are stacked up on top of each other. So, so that's what that does. A uh, really nice way to get some, sometimes you have to click, you know, two, you know, two to 10 times to get to the item that you want to get to, depending on how much stuff you have in your plan. So that's a nice button. <clears throat> All right. 136 on that one, Dan. Wow. Well, cool. That was an easy one. That's right. um, copy replicate. 
That is transform, transform red replicate. replicate. I was half right. <clears throat> that is a cool tool. Transform this replicate. This is your favorite one. Uh, they did well, a big overhaul in uh, this X14. They did. They yeah. did. They added a lot of new things in there. We won't get into all of that extra stuff they added, but Transform Replicate is kind of what makes Chief uh, a CAD program that it is. So one example might be where I did the re created those floor joists before. I could go to Transform Replicate, and then if you're wise enough to just set up the hotkey number T or letter T, for transform replicate, then you just have to hit that to open that. Um, so you could do all these different things with whatever you've selected. You can make copies, you can move things. Uh, so if you just want to move something over a certain amount, just highlight it and then come in here and move it. You have to understand the X and Y on your computer screen, X and Y. So when we're looking at the screen, whatever view we're in, and so you've got X's to the right and left. So the positive X is to the right. So if I want to move something over to the right, I'll just type a positive number here. I don't just to, just the number. You don't have to put a plus sign in front of it. If I want to move something to the left, I type minus whatever that number is. If I want to move something up on the screen, I just type in a positive number under Y. If I want to move something down on the screen, I, I type in a minus number under Y. And then, of course, we've got our Z delta, which is the three back, you know, the floor to the top of the building um, in, on your screen. So you can raise and lower things like roofs and all sorts of things in your plant. So, so could you conceivably do three steps at the same time? Could you copy something? Could you move it? So could you copy and move something over five inches and down negative three inches and rotate at 45 degrees? All you could. Same time? Yeah, you could. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I haven't practiced on it. But yeah, you oh, could. Yeah, I'll let um, my if, if, let if, in and well, click enter. Well, let's go. Let's go down here at um, 15 degrees, 16, 15 distance, 16 inches. Now we probably won't end up with a 16 inch. Look at oh, that! Oh, Look at that! Oh, that's cool. cool. The spirograph. <laughs> um, that's not what I was trying to do. Um, so I was trying to do now if you could do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Yeah. So if I move this item over 16 inches at a time, and then I, I want rotate to rotate it 45. I want to move it down. No, I don't want to rotate it. I just want okay. to copy it down at an angle like oh, this. Got it. Okay. Got it. So what I okay. did was I rotated it. Um you need the Y delta. Negative. Yeah. Negative eight. That, what, that, how do and then, that? No, yeah, there it is. There you yeah. go. And it still keeps the 16 on center. Yeah, thank you. And it moved each one down eight inches. Right. That's pretty cool. Actually, I, I do that. I do use that tool when I'm laying out manual, you know, stair treads or something like that, which I've done in the past. Don't have to do that so much anymore because chief stairs are better. But transform replicate. Learn that. Learn that tool. Um, get used to using it. It'll save you a ton of time when you're doing things, especially like, you know, wrote, uh, you want to rotate something specific, like you have a plot plan and you need to rotate it a little bit. Um, you can actually type in an angle and it'll rotate it for you. Resizing, reflecting, I mean, just all of that. Then you've got some things about center, about absolute point, current point. So um, lots of ways to use that does tool. Does XY ever change? What does that mean? The XY does change if you um, are in an elevation and you've made it a CAD detail. If you're in elevation, you want to move stuff up, up and down, you have to use the Z axis. Oh, yeah. So right. If you put it in a CAD detail or make it a CAD detail, then it changes the Z axis to Y. You oh, guys, I can hear the uh, spin. but I think the best part there was is if, you, if you're going to use this, you should um, really use your hot, change your hot key for that item. So you don't have to go down to the bottom of the screen and click a button. Mm hmm. Right, set up That's the hotkey, right. the T. Um, this one is great. I love this one. This is when you copy something and you want to repeat the copy and you don't want yep. to keep going back and hit copy. Yep. You select an item and then you hit the little, then you hit copy down at the bottom so, of your screen. So let's say I want to make a bunch of these windows, copies of these windows. So like what I'm saying, hit the copy button down here. And then, and we then hit hold the on to pin. that little, oh, I love this. Push pin. That will lock that copy in until you hit escape. Yeah. 
Okay, so now you just keep push, you know, keep clicking and you're going to keep getting copies. Of course, I'm not spacing them out or anything. I'm just adding more copies. Then I hit escape and now I'm out of that mode. So I love that. that. That's I use that one when I'm doing my lighting plan. It is the coolest thing and super fast. That, yeah, that works with a bunch of the edit tools, break tool, yeah. chamfer, fillet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So and that's the, as long as you bring that up. The uh, like if you're doing a countertop and you have a, you know, you want to fill it some of the corners, but not some of the others. Uh, so you have a shape of a countertop, but you just want to fill it or chamfer some of the corners. So you click on one of the, you know, near one of the corners and you hit that tool down here. And you were not even doing one that's on the spinner, but because uh, Renee brought it up. So I'm going to put a radius of six there, but I'm going to hit the lock. You know, I want to lock that in. If I hit the A, it'll do all of the corners. So I click on that. Now I could just keep going around and just do some of the corners. Oops, I have to click around. So you just click around the corners and keep clicking until you get the ones you want. That's, that's a really nice. That's a, that again. The push pin is really a nice feature for that. That's great. <clears throat> all right. What are we doing? <clears throat> You're, you're designing a really weird house. <laughs> very, very weird. Yes. <laughs> Won't be the first time I've done that. All right. We got an upside down table. This one's important. <clears throat> what is so that? Make parallel. Make parallel. Oh, yes. yes. Or perpendicular. Actual, yeah, parallel or perpendicular. Or perpendicular. <clears throat> so, so if you have a line that's a little bit, you know, you, you want to make this the same as that, make it parallel. So you click near the end of the line that you want to lock in place. So I want to do it like this, where the bottom stays locked in place. So click near that edge, and that locks that edge. Now you hit the Make Parallel button right here. All right. And you see it's Control B. I don't know. Why Control B? I don't know. It's just what it is. And then click on what it is you want to make it parallel to. And that will do that so you could be anything in your plan it doesn't have to be another line um, on the other hand if you want to make it perpendicular it does have to be a little bit past 45 in order for that to work okay um the other line i had i wouldn't be able to make perpendicular to that it wasn't quite enough for that angle so again click near the edge that you want to lock parallel perpendicular and click on the edge you want to make it perpendicular to and it'll do that now. that's pretty cool you guys know if the start and indicators are on um, by default out of the box templates. Are they now? Uh, the start end indicators that you have right on turned on. Yeah. yeah. Are those on by default no. out of the box? No, they're not. You have to go to your preferences, go to yeah. edit, and turn on your start end indicators right here, which is really handy for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, that I won't get into. Now, Let's say you're rotating a plot plan. Okay, you've got a CAD box that's shaped weird, and you need you need to ro rotate the whole box to be parallel or perpendicular to something. I need this edge to be parallel to that. All right, but I want to change the whole box because if I just click on this and do that, it only does that edge. Okay, that's no good. That's not what I want. I want to do the whole box. So what you have to do is double click on the make parallel tool to open that option i don't know why they don't put in that you know they should do that where they you know you have the options over here mm -hmm. uh, so you know it's there i mean nobody knows this options there because nobody clicks on the double click i know it. it's there because you showed it to me a long yeah time ago. <laughs> yeah i think i found it by accident once many years ago so i want to rotate the entire box the entire polyline object and now when I do that, see how it rotates the whole thing? Done. So you can also shift select and then just use the make perpendicular. Oh, sure. Okay. That makes sense too. Because you're when you do a shift select, you're group selecting the whole object. Um, I've just group selected it. Of course, I do have this set to double click now. Um, come on. Do this. So yeah, so I can rotate a shift, a group selected object, which is what I've just done by holding shift. And now I can just do it without that or not. Shift select. 
rotate. Doesn't work. Doesn't Why work. Why is that me. not working? That's weird. I know. It doesn't work for Broke me. Broke it. So I time to spin the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> time to spin the wheel. I'm giving you too much time. <laughs> yeah, we're not That's in awesome. trouble. Not in troubleshooting mode today. Custom mountain. Ooh. What's a custom oh. mountain? Do you ever have a window that you need to do custom muntins on? Mutton, yeah. muntin, whatever you call them. So if you have a window and you want to do something a little bit different with the grid, like that. Look at you, Dan. Okay. Can you spell your name in there? Probably could. You'd have to write it with CAD. So if I put a window in here, and let's just go, you have to do this from an elevation view. Okay. So Not too many people know this one. Yeah, this is a good one. So I just made a copy of that window. So by default, um, let me get rid of those lines. When you open a window, you could do, you know, your grids. Um, what do they call them here even? Uh, Lights. Uh, thank you. So you could do these four different types of things. But if you want to do anything different, you have to draw it in yourself. So all you do is you go into... God, there was a day we had to push F2 to go into CAD mode in order to draw CAD lines. Boy, that was a long time ago. You're still, you're still trying to press it? <laughs> no, no. I just, it just for some reason dawned on me because I remember back in the day we had to switch out of 3D mode and go into CAD mode so we could draw these things. So, anyway, so you just draw the CAD lines that you want to be your, your mutton, mutton, your grid, lights, whatever you want to call it. And then you group select those lines that you've just drawn. Don't group select the window, just the CAD lines. And what you're going to do is block those lines, and you're going to group them together. Okay? So group those lines. And then after you've grouped the lines, you're going to see a new icon when you click on the window. Not the CAD block. Click on the window, and you see this little icon. I guess I should have added that icon to my list. Um, and that will turn those CAD lines into a 3D object. And now wow. you can go... Now you can go into the window and you can specify how big you want those to be. So if you want really fat muttons, make them fatter. If you want really skinny ones, you can make them skinnier. Could, so I just had a, can you uh, do two different sets of muttons so you could have two different sizes? Like the vertical one be, be wider than the horizontal ones? No, I don't think so. You'd, no. have to use, you'd have to use CAD, you know. Well, if you uh, did CAD on here again and did it, did it again, uh no because you you're not going to be able to do that I, i'm quite certain uh but let's find out so so if i click on the window now oh look at this we got, got two load muttons button. unload uh didn't do it though what did it do no it didn't it's only going to do one block okay so i'd have to make all of that one block so that's how you do custom muttons. Wow, well, that was a big and one. It, it it's a minutes. little tricky to get that right. So it is. Yeah. Sometimes bug, bug Dan, work. not me, if you have problems <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> Call Nigel and tech support. Um <laughs> that's that's a select of things that are all the same, right? When you yeah. just want to select all the same things. Yes. Yeah, so um that's that's a good icon which i never ever think to use uh because i'm just so used to group selecting things the way i always used to but if i want if i select a roof item and i click on this icon down here uh -huh. and i want to select more roof icons i think you got to hit the one that looks like a pizza and that'll select all the similar items which in this case are roof items okay Hold on, though. So, I thought it was, but I think I've used it with electrical, where I've just been able to pull, just select. One of them allows you just to select one specific electrical item, not all the electrical. So like outlets, you could just get the um, switches, right? So put some switches on there, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, what, that's right. That's what we're talking about. So the pizza right. one will allow us to select all of the electrical, I believe. And, and the, the other one will let the, you just select. Yeah, yeah, the square pizza one, the round pizza one, and the square pizza one. I know they look yeah. like pizzas to pepperoni pizzas. Yeah, it works. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I always think of when I see those icons. So when I click on this and I hit the round one, it gets all of the electrical. OK, 
Okay, if I highlight the outlet and I just want to get outlets, I highlight the square one and that will just get the outlets, right? Or do it I have should. To, or do I have to draw a box around the plan to get the, oops, I right clicked here by accident. Um, um, that's the one I never one. quite understood. Let's see. Don't you have to, do you have to select the box and then the round one? No, the round one just does it. No, um, no. Okay. There's some tools you have to select one and then the other, like the chamfer. So no, it yeah. doesn't. It's not the like square that. one allows you to draw a marquee over the whole plan. Okay. So if I were to select the electrical outlet up here, and I hold my shift key down and draw a marquee, yeah. okay, that just does get just the outlets. That's a tool restrictive selection. Yeah. Electrical yeah. is one of the few things that does this differently, and the select marquee similar will select only only the items right um, right like only light switches right okay so yeah so on that same note when you're working with chief when you want to select anything in your plan just highlight the icon you want to select so if i want to select roofs i'm going to highlight the roof icon and hold my shift key down and now i can select roofs nothing else cabinets highlight your base cabinet so that's your that's your shift select function. Now it'll just get all the cabinets, wall cabinets. So that's I'm so used to doing that. I don't even think of using that. So one since you here. mentioned cabinets, if you select the the full height cabinet, you'll get all the cabinets. Correct. Yep. But not the appliances. <clears throat> we getting any questions out there from anybody? Right here. The open Mac. Well, door. your first problem is you're on a Mac. <laughs> oh, that's boy, Dan. Somebody. I don't know what that one is. Let's start a war. <laughs> uh oh, what's Some the next question? Bars. Uh, well, hopefully, you're backing up your data folder to a cloud or something like that because you could restore that pretty quickly. <clears throat> well, um, you might have done this. Um, you might have gone up to view and you might have hit this. Uh, uh, where's the toolbars? Here, toolbars. Yeah, you you might have you yeah. might have done that by accident. So check that. There used to be a I used to be a hotkey. I, I think they took that off finally. Otherwise, um, go to your data folder, find the BAK extension, delete the BAK extension, and see if it restores it. Restart yeah. your. So this one, if you guys have not done what I'm about to tell you, if you don't do anything else from what we've talked about today, make sure you do this one. The icon we just saw was this one right here, the open dialogue icon, okay? You should never, ever have to click that. I mean, I've seen, you know, if you think about what you do all day long, you're coming down here. Every time you highlight something, you're coming down here. You know, if you could do one of these things on your screen from the day that you worked on it, you can see you're getting a lot of wrist movement to open a dialogue. I mean, you can double click on things. That works fine, too. But go set up a hotkey. Go to your Go to your tools. Go to toolbars and hotkeys. I don't know why Chief doesn't do this. Um, they have a hotkey called Control. The hotkey by default is Control E. If you're used to that, stay with it. Don't worry about it. Let's go customize the hotkey though. So I'm going to go down here and type in Open um, Dialog. Is that what it is? Uh, I think it's just Open. Uh, what is it called again? Uh, it's open, open Object. Open there Object. There sorry. Yes. Um, and, and by default, it'll say control E here. Just get rid of the control. Just type in E down here. You're going to override the arc function, which is like, who gives a crap about yeah. that? <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of those things you'd use one in 10 years um, if you remembered it. Just make it an E. Now, every time you want to open something, your finger's right there, hit E, and it'll open the dialog. Hit E, it'll open the dialog. Again, if you don't do anything it, else, make that change. I use I control E like for that. open symbol. <clears throat> oh, there you go. For this, for this, uh, you need a fixture uh, first. I guess I need a symbol. Object. Yeah, I know which one you yeah. mean. The little chair with the pencil yeah. on it. So, hey, only um, do this Marnie, if you want to save your wrist. Yes. Yeah. Marnie Sorry. Vincent. Only do this if you want to save your wrist. But I'll wait. Keep on. Oh. Uh, Marnie Vincent has a question that that we didn't cover on the multiple copy tool. If they're an offset command. Yeah, you can do that with the multiple copy if you hit the. Um, the round edit handle, it'll offset. So if you've got like a CAD box and you want to offset it 10 inches, you can do that with multiple copy. Uh, all right, explain to me what you're, what you're explaining so to me. So hit your multiple copy now. 
<clears throat> and then drag the circle handle. All right. And now oh. we're offsetting. So how, how did it set that offset? Is that the concentric? It set it from the multiple copy interval. Oh, really? Yeah. It's whatever's already in the interval that's already yeah. been set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that circle button I was talking about earlier. I've been playing with that a little bit lately. And uh, yeah, so whatever this number set at. So if it's set at 12 and I do the same thing and we grab that, now it's every 12 inches. So but it's, it's like the whole thing. It's like a concentric jump. Yeah. So Got if it. that's what you're looking at, if you want to just move something over and offset it a little bit, just start pulling it, hit your tab key and type in how far you want to move it and it'll move it over that far that you can do up and down both so that's another way to do it all right uh let's go spin the wheel how many we're getting close 10 to i knew we wouldn't get through all of these oh that was seven and seven and a half minutes oh that was Ooh. a nasty one auto roof tips well, you all did right, two you, you, you did two minutes. things there you got three minutes dan all right auto roof tips mm -hmm. um a couple things about auto roofs <clears throat> there's a few icons down here when you're doing automatic roofs, you're always going to start out using that tool. So you're going to go up to your uh, your roof tool. And by default, it comes set up this way in chief, but you turn auto rebuild roofs on. Okay, so every time you do something to your plan, chief will put a roof over the part that you're working on. Okay, I'm going to say hit OK to delete what I have in there. So if I go and I add another room, chief will put a roof over that automatically. Okay, and because it's turned on, I want to make that a gable end. So let's bring up a 3D view. There's so many, the auto roof function in Chief has gotten so much better over the years. Um, and plus, when you understand what the roof tool does, uh, that'll make a huge difference for you. Yeah. Remember, the only thing the automatic roof tool does, the only thing that it does, nothing else. And I'll repeat it one more time. The only thing Chief does when it puts a roof on your plan is it looks at every outside wall <clears throat> in your plan which in this case, any wall facing the outside of the screen. And Chief is going to put a baseline above every one of those walls. And Chief's going to then automatically build a roof plane up from that baseline. And it's going to try to automatically join them together. That's it. Chief does nothing else. Looks for the ceiling height of the room next to the wall, puts a baseline there and builds a roof plane up, tries to hook it together, done. So when you change ceiling heights and things like that in your rooms while you're working on them, uh, the roof tool will react to those ceiling hearts. I want to change that back to a hip. I'm going to hit this icon here, change it to a hip. There's some other tools in the dialog for um, underneath the roof where you can do different things to the roof, and those tools will help you yeah. get your roof looking a little closer. An auto Dutch gable, you can do auto double pitch hip roofs, you can do yeah. shed roofs. Uh, remember to use invisible walls to create rooms so that you can continue a hip across exactly if you need to so if i use the room divider tool even and i come out here and i just draw another room on here like i want a covered porch um done i've got a roof over that and they're invisible walls right now so and then when you're done using the automatic tool you can get rid of the invisible walls and the roof will stay there so that's you know something to keep in mind yeah. Continue Keep slope right. downwards. If you select a wall and in its roof panel, you can continue a slope downwards so that the roof is cutting into that wall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. So the roof tools in chief are really fun. I, I really like those. Add to library. To your library. Add to your library. Okay. So when you're in chief and you've created something really cool like that window that you want to save and use over and over again, you can add that to your library by clicking in the little book icon here, okay? Um, that will put it into your library that you can now um, get my library. I had my library on my other screen, which is where I keep it. And let me make this smaller. I've run with two different screen resolutions. Kind of a pain, but it works. Um, so that window's in there now. So anytime I want to use that again, I can use it. So I could rename the window. I could put it in any number of catalogs that I want to. Um, and you could keep your libraries going all the time. So here's a here's a hint. If you ever add anything to your library, immediately name it and immediately categorize it. Yep. Don't don't wait till later because otherwise you're going to end up with this a whole lot of things that mean nothing and you won't know what they are. 
Take the time to organize right away. The blocks must be turned off. Um, you could even put CAD blocks in there, anything that you want to. Yeah. yeah I was just, I, I, I put this in the comment section, but um, back on the roofs a little bit. We also have roof groups, and people don't know that one either. You can basically distinguish one set of roofs from another with a roof group that's in your general panel of your room designation. I'll add that this is pace position. Next time. Pace hold position. This is one of my favorite buttons. Okay. This one will save you a boatload of time and, and work on your plans. Um, if you're not using it, you need to start using it. Get out of there. Paste hold position. So at any time, um, maybe I want to copy something from one place to another and keep it in the same position. Um, stairwells are a good example for that. So if I go put in a second floor, which I do have here, and let's say I want to put some walls up on the second floor. So I'll go copy a bunch of my walls. In fact, let's just highlight a bunch of walls here. And I'm going to copy those up to the second floor. Okay, I want them to be in the same exact place. So I just highlighted the wall icon, held my shift key down, and group selected a bunch of walls. And I'm going to go up to the second floor and I'll paste and hold those. And I'll say, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, what, just did, what did that say? Unable to paste window. Windows must be placed. Oh, you can't do bay windows yet. thought we could copy and paste bay windows. What are they talking about? Is that what it was talking about? Can you explode it and then do it? Maybe. Well, then it's just walls and windows right. at that point. But I thought they had a copy button for bay windows now. Maybe you can only do it if you paste it into another wall. But here we go. I, I use the paste hole position to put everything in one place. Okay. Of course, my roof got rebuilt because I created a second floor now. I should have turned my auto roof off first. But that's fine. That's what I wanted it to do. So copy paste hole position. So if I put a window here in this wall, and then I want to, oh, actually, let's try that bay window. Let's see if that, uh, if I can copy and paste that. say what's the dollar sign um <laughs> it's a switch uh so i want to uh place a window a bay window come on and you can do this uh bay window <laughs> and we'll make this a little bigger and i want to paste that up on the second floor see the auto roof is still turned on so it's still doing that as soon as i try to modify something she's going to say well you want to turn that off and i'll say yes no it won't do auto roofs anymore Okay, so I do have a copy button for bay window, which is new in X14, paste and hold, so I could do that. Okay, so that worked fine. All right, it just didn't like it when I was trying to do the walls. So, in fact, it didn't get all the windows in there. Kind of hey, did. Hey, Dan, credit to you. It's so difficult to do this stuff while <clears throat> streaming live. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun, isn't it? Though? It's, yeah. it's always a challenge. Um, Set your separate pitch for supporting walls. Yeah, yeah. There's so many things you can do on on roofs, as Ms. Sure. Sure. Renee this was one. saying. All right, we got Auto a couple, a couple more, huh? Auto roofs again. Can you show us this one? Set your set your pitch different by the supporting wall for the roof. <laughs> Sorry, I had my library covering up the screen. Oh, I got you to backtrack again. Um, Sorry. <laughs> set your separate pitch from the supporting wall roof panel in this dialog so, box. So, so open up your wall and, and yeah. go to. So if I if I go into let's go up I'm on my second floor here <clears throat> and I I turn auto roofs off now so it's not going to put the roofs on automatically um, so let me go back in here and double click on the roof icon and turn the auto rebuild roof back on and I'll say okay okay so if you want to have a different pitch on something click on the wall where you want the different pitch to be and open its dialog, hit the E key to open its dialog. And you can change the pitch of that roof above that wall. So if I want that to be a 10, I can do that. Um, and then hit okay, and now you see that chief will, oh, I didn't turn my auto roofs back on, did I? Okay, now it will change. See how it changed the pitch of just that one? That's really handy too, when you're working on this kind of stuff. Um, you, do, you should set your, keep the fascia height the same in some cases. All right, back to our wheel. We got a couple more left. Wow. A couple quickies. Um, this is kind of a fun way to come up with lots of topics, but 
you know you're not going to get through them all. I additional love this. angles. This is great. Additional angles. I like additional <laughs> angles. Uh, sometimes you need to um, do some things. Say you're drawing a cross section of a plan and you need to draw some lines at a specific pitch. You'll see in chief that it, it snaps every so many degrees. It's uh, set up to snap every 15 degrees by default. All right. So what you can do is you can double click on this little arrow icon right here. All right. And that will open up this menu where you can have additional angles. So I want to, you know, you could set it to seven and a half degrees. Yeah, you could do that. But I want to just add, I'm going to, I want to draw some lines at eight and 12. Okay. So I'm going to type eight and 12. Then I'm going to type minus eight. You just blew my mind. I didn't know you could do that. The eight and 12, type in eight and 12. That's all we learn from each other. Oh, man. Um, that's yeah. cool. You, you can type in any of these formats in any box at any time. Eight in 12. You type that out. That's that's why. Yeah, just like that. One. Yep. And no click match okay. required. Click OK. And now I can actually draw a box. And you'll see that it's going to be a little bit of a different snap. See what that little smaller snap there? One of those is the 8 and 12. So if I click on that line, I just drew an open its dialog box. It doesn't show what pitch, it doesn't show the pitch there. So now I'm going to click the number style button down here and tell Chief to display pitch in that box. And now I could do that. And now it will display that number in the box. And now it says, yep, that's the 8 and 12 line. So that's how you do additional angles. Really handy. I, I find I use it quite a bit when I'm trying to do things, uh, certain types of drawings. I've had buildings I've had to measure that had weird uh, shaped rooms where, you know, the room might have been, you know, kind of odd like this. And, and I knew that I knew the lengths coming out here. So that I would draw would be I would draw the line at that additional angle. I'll just hold my control key down, snap at a weird angle. But now I need to draw some walls at that angle. So I would open the dialog for that line. I'd copy that angle and I'd put that in my additional angles. And I always do plus and minus just because then you can draw both ways and it doesn't matter. I don't know if that's changed over the years. Now I can draw walls at that angle and you're done. So that makes it really easy. So your additional angles, if, if you ever find yourself using more than what's on that list, don't <laughs> because now you've got every time you draw something you're going to have those little snaps see how you got that little bitty snap right in there it's going to get really confusing trying to line things up so anyway i rarely do you need more than a few of them in that box in any plan that i've ever done all right let's you, go back here you know, this one well that's not the right one hang on just played with the custom buttons and i could not get my custom lights to work on the left sliding it only appears on one panel. And you do the same thing on each panel. Um, is there a button like there is with double hung to do the do one or the other? Well, double hung, you can do the top or bottom pane. Right. You um, do the same thing for sliding? I don't know if doors uh, allow you to turn them off. Yeah, on you, the have to, panel. you have to draw it on each panel. You have to draw it on each side. You do have to draw it on each panel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you have to be careful. Um, I think one of the lines has to touch an edge of the wood, of the frame of the window, yeah. or it won't work. The this, this sash, if you get it close to the sash, it'll do it. Yeah. This is probably a topic for another time, but... Um, All right. Last one. This You would do this differently to, to answer this question. Draw the perimeter of a site with? Yeah. With the, yeah, I've done that. Um, I'm not trained in that, so it's always confusing for me when I do that, but I always manage to get it to work. Um, you can change it to a quadrant bearing, bearing style. And if you've got like a, a parcel map from your municipality, just type it in to the um, to your CAD lines selected angle and yeah. do it that way. I know I, I draw them, draw them separate lines because I've, surveyors don't follow any kind of. I've way. covered that in many of my training classes where I would study like hell to get it figured out to show it in the class. And then as soon as I'm done with it, I forget what I was doing. It's kind of like studying for a test in school. Yeah. Um, but I, I, yes, it does work. I've done it many times and, uh, it, it's cool. 
All right, the last icon I just clicked on, which was this little bugger right here. Apply properties, okay? But we to get to that, we need to use match properties too. All right, so what is match properties? Um, if you've got a plan that you've got, here's a good use for it. Here's where I, I, I don't use match properties a ton. I use it enough to uh, get what I need. I find it's sometimes harder to figure out which item on that big long list of crap to match properties to to paste it on something else and is just to go fix it on the other thing um, or copy and paste it but anyway what i'm going to do here i'm going to just go lower the floor here in this one room a little bit so the height of that room is a little bit off so when i click on match properties that's this little icon right here okay i'm going to say you've got a big plan and you've got lots of rooms with ups and downs and ceiling heights and floor heights are different so click on match properties and what what will happen is when you pick on one so i'm going to go in here i'm going to go floor i'm going to type the word floor up here and i'm going to i want my floor elevation what is my floor elevation um uh, which room i'm on the second floor okay so what is my finished floor elevation and i click okay and it's going to show me all the rooms that have the same floor elevation i thought i changed this room but i didn't floor below i changed so let me change this one to, you know, 120, okay? So if I do that again, if I go here and I type floor. I want to check all my floor heights in my plan to see if they're all the same. So I'll go floor elevation, which should be that number, and I click OK, and you see that, oh, one of the rooms isn't the same, but I want it to be the same. So now you'll notice that this little icon down here is available to you. It's kind of like this, is kind of like the paste button. Okay, the first one, fake think of as kind of like the copy button or the, you know, figure, you know, selection button. But I want to paste that setting I just chose into the other rooms. And when I do that, now I can see all the floor heights are the same. So I do use that function a fair amount on larger projects just to check the floor heights, ceiling heights, uh, floor thicknesses, any of the things on this list, which is, you know, that list has gotten substantial over the years. I mean, it's a lot of things going on in that room. So that's really something to keep in mind. All right. That was our last wheel. We are over time. Um, but I do want to, again, just uh, you guys, uh, first of all, thanks for being here. Thanks for spending a little time with us. But where did my screen go? Also, uh, again, if you're interested in uh, staying with us, Coeur one room left, 585 for four nights, which I don't think. Dan, it shows it. that there's two rooms left. In house three, there says well, that there's two rooms this left. This is kind of spoken for by a guy. Okay. Uh, but okay. it's but it's still available if he decides not to take it. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I do have two on there. But uh, just let me know. Drop me an email. I'd be happy to uh, talk to you about it. Um, it would be a fun time. Uh, we've got our sale going on. So by all means, check out 40% off everything right now. And as you just saw, the icons that we were covering are from my CAD class that I teach. And this is where I do cover all of the icons, similar to what we're talking about today, but I go through a lot quicker and a lot uh, with a lot more detail. So it's, it's really amazing when you start looking at all these things and all the tools they've added to this program and what they can do. It's just like, geez. Uh, <laughs> that's where I'm so glad I was able to grow up with the program because I've gotten to, to learn these things a little at a time. That's well, I love of, that you do this, that you break down every single tool, and that's really great. So thank you so much. You bet. You, you. see you see Carl's comment? What? No. <laughs> Pin that one. <laughs> no. Uh, space for me in the camper. <laughs> special request. <laughs> you want to share a bit nice. with John? All Let's right. In the front seat. <laughs> anyway. All right, you guys. Sounds Thanks great. for thank being you guys. with us. Uh, let Have us know a great if you have week. Any questions. See you in a couple Take weeks. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.